Hey everyone, it's Jonna from Tudor N. Um, I have a video that talks about blood flow through the heart, but this one's gonna get a little bit more into some congenital disorders. Um, for instance, those of you that are taking pediatrics or those of you that are just having a hard time with cardiac disorders, trying to figure out what happens in a VSD or a ASD or a tetralogy of flow, or is it obstructive disorder? Is it an increased flow disorder? How do we figure that out? Well, the most important thing, um, again, kind of going back to my holy grail, is understanding the basics of how things work. Now, heart and cardiac lessons can seem really like overwhelming and daunting, and it's going to be really difficult to learn because some of these concepts are pretty advanced and critical, but you can get there. The, the best thing about the heart is that if you can understand the flow, and if you can understand directions and pressures in the heart, then it's easy to piece together in your mind what happens when those things become disturbed. So for instance, where do we see this a lot? We see it in the pediatric course where you're learning about different cardiovascular dysfunctions. And you look at things and you have, you know, a hundred different types of cardiac disorders and some that you really want to focus on. So it's good to break them up in the type of disorder that they are. For instance, knowing if you have a increased pulmonary blood flow disorder. So something wrong with the heart that's going to increase the blood flow to the lungs. Um, knowing if you have an obstructive defect where there might be narrowing somewhere in the heart that's causing uh, the blood flow to be obstructed. Knowing if you have a decreased pulmonary uh, blood flow issue uh, because maybe you're not having enough blood flow that's getting to the lungs because of the disorder that exists there. So breaking it up by the type of defects that it might be. So the big common ones that we hear about are ASDs and VSDs, atrial septal defect or a ventricular septal defect. So either we have a hole in the wall here, and let's pretend like we've got a hole. So we have a hole here, right? This is theoretically, right? Or we have a hole here, and let's put this here. We have a hole here between our atria. So we have the mixing here that happens. So What's gonna be the big deal with these type of defects? Well, if we have this type of issue, which becomes a increased pulmonary blood flow issue, then we have to remember that if I have, let's start with our VSD. Put this here so we know what we're talking about. That looks like an eight. Let me go back. So VSD. We have a VSD. That means we're gonna have mixing of the blood. Now remember, the pressure on the right side of the heart versus the pressure on the left side of the heart is going to be different. The pressure on the left side of the heart is going to be greater. Why? Because it has to pump all the blood everywhere to the body. The pressure on the right side of the heart only has to pump the blood to the lungs, which is our neighbor, right? So our lungs are here and our body here. So the left side of the heart has a pretty great job as far as having to pump blood to lots more places further away than the right side. So because the pressure is higher on the left side, we expect that the blood in the left ventricle is going to shunt over when we have this type of defect and end up here in the right ventricle. So that means we're adding more blood to the right ventricle. Adding more blood to the right ventricle means that we're going to have more blood flowing out through the pulmonary artery to the lungs. And if we have more blood flowing out to the lungs, then we're going to have an increased blood flow, which means we're at risk for having overload in the lungs. Another thing that we have to consider is that if we have more blood in the um, right ventricle because it's shunting over from the left, we're at risk for heart failure because the left ventricle, excuse me, the right ventricle might have to do a little bit more work to pump out all this extra blood. And the harder our heart works, it's a muscle, right? That muscle can become hypertrophic. And a hypertrophic heart muscle is not good because that becomes a weak heart muscle. So that's an example of that. So let's delete this. And let's say now that we're gonna talk about uh, ASD. So similar issue, it's a problem with our septum, right? We have uh, a connection. We shouldn't have a connection. That wall should be intact. This is our septum here, a wall should be intact. But in the event that we have a septal defect, it's not, and so we have mixing. So if we have a septal defect where atria, our right and our left atria are mixing, again, we're gonna have that shunt. 
we're gonna have that shunt coming over here, left to right, which means we're gonna have more blood in our right atrium, which means that we're gonna have more blood going down to our right ventricle, which means more blood out into our lungs. So this again becomes an increased pulmonary blood flow issue. So understanding the pressures, understanding the directions is really important to help you to figure out what's going to happen in the heart and how will that manifest in the body if this happens. So we talked about things like possible heart failure, possible fluid overload in the lungs. You might hear that pulmonary congestion. Another thing that we uh, learn about that's kind of popular, some of our obstructive defects. So for instance, coarctation of the aorta or um, even aortic stenosis. So coarctation of the aorta is when we have an issue with narrowing at our aorta. So let me try to draw this like it's pinched off and narrowed. So if we look here, we see that it looks like we have this little pinched off section here in aorta. So it's a narrowing part. That's coarctation of the aorta. That becomes an obstructive defect. Obstructive defect is anything that's going to, as the term sounds like, obstruct blood flow. So in this case, it's going to obstruct the blood flow out through the aorta. Something interesting happens with this because this person can have really bounding pulses um, at the upper extremities and at the neck as well, really high blood pressure. But by the time you get down to the distal extremities and, and very far away, like your feet can be very weak and thready. And that's because if you think about it, this blood's being pumped out, right, everywhere out through the body, and here it's getting out just fine. Then it meets this, this blockage, if you will. It's going to meet this resistance. And so it's going to increase the pressure at our upper extremities. But because we have this obstruction here, everything that's coming down further away from that, that's going to be the area that's going to be affected by it. So that's an example of an obstructive defect. Another thing that we learn about and we hear about all the time popular one, Tetralogy of Fallot. And that's actually four different disorders that we see that happens in the heart. So with Tetralogy of Fallot, we have four problems. We end up with this pulmonic stenosis, so narrowing here. We end up with right ventricular hypertrophy here. We end up with an overriding aorta there. And we have a ventricular septal defect, a problem here. So we have four problems with tetralogy of the flow. So if we have narrowing of the pulmonary artery, let's draw that narrowing in so we can visualize that. So we've got our narrowing of the artery. Ah, let's use a darker color, make it easy to visualize. There we go. So now this artery has become narrowed. So see how tight that is there. If we have hypertrophy, that means that this heart muscle is getting bigger. And a bigger heart muscle, it's not a great deal, right? A bigger heart muscle doesn't equate to great. We're going to have a stronger heart doing a better job. It's actually going to end up being a uh, weak heart doing a pretty lousy job because this muscle has become so big. So here's our hypertrophic right ventricle. If we have a ventricle septal defect, we're gonna go ahead and make that connection here. And then the overriding aorta really says that the aorta should be picking up blood from our left ventricle. But if it's overriding, some of that's getting into our right ventricle as well. So blood's gonna be able to enter there. So because of these issues we have, this is going to impact the pulmonary blood flow. It's gonna decrease the pulmonary blood flow. Why? Because as blood is flowing through the heart, right? So we've got blood coming in, we have blood coming through our right atria, down to our right ventricle, so to go out through our pulmonary artery, it's narrowed. So we're gonna have a decreased amount of blood that's gonna be making it out of there. Because it's narrowed, it's, it's tight, it's hard to get that blood through there. So our right ventricle has to pump harder to overcome that pressure, which causes that hypertrophy. Additionally, because we have this overriding aorta, it's picking up blood from both the right side and the left side. So now we have mixed blood going out to the body. 
in addition to having decreased the amount of blood getting to the lungs for oxygen. And of course, that ventricular septal defect is mixing our blood back and forth. And so that is a big issue. And we learn a lot about that in, in nursing school, especially in pediatrics, because of the several different problems it presents in the heart and how that manifests in the body. So if you just take a minute to think about that, think about the blood flow, think about the pressures, think about what happens if you obstruct something. Think about what happens when the heart has to pump harder. Muscle gets bigger, which means you have a weaker kind of pump. Think about what happens when the mixing of blood occurs. And I promise you that understanding those basic concepts make it really easy to piece together what happens in all these different types of cardiac disorders.